So normally I don't, I don't go here. Normally I don't go here. Normally because I just like talking about astrophysics. But I, I, given this conference and given how many of you out there are rabid atheists, I got to give you a bone here. I got to toss you a bone, <laughs> okay? So I'm going to toss you a few bones, okay? Just because you're rabid, all right? <laughs> so let's look at some data here. You probably know all these data. Uh, actually, the data I'm about to show is for the United States. I don't know what it is. I'm sure the data exists. But when I compiled it, I'm going to make yet a separate point. So it wouldn't have mattered what country was represented here. In America, 90% of the nation would claim to be religious. And you, you define this in a way that's unambiguous. You don't say, well, do you go to church every Sunday? You don't ask that question. Plenty of people go to church who are not religious. They go to get a date or so. They go for the cupcakes or something. They don't go to be spiritually enlightened. So you ask a different question. You say, is there a God that listens to your prayers? If you answer yes to that, you're religious by anybody's definition because your understanding of a deity is that that deity is monitoring your daily affairs. So that's unambiguous. About nine, it's, this number's dropped in the last couple of years, but it's about 90%. Turns out if you go to college and get an advanced degree, a master's or a doctorate, where these are degrees where you actually question the state of existing knowledge. The undergraduate degree doesn't really do that. You're learning from textbooks that are written by somebody else. Your doctrines are already there. The higher degrees imply that you are questioning the very fabric of the knowledge you had previously learned. Among that community, it's 60%. It has dropped. Well, that's interesting. Let's keep going. How about scientists of all stripes? So a biologist, chemist, sorry, let's include engineers as well, people who have formal scientific training, mathematicians as well. OK, what, what happens next? Drops to 40%. Now, if you look at this number, it looks like, wow, so scientists, the public is 90%, scientists are 40%. No, the drop is not that significant because every scientist has, a, has an advanced degree. So in fact, the drop is not from 90 to 40, the drop is from 60 to 40. So becoming a scientist is not as big an effect on whether you're religious as you might otherwise think. Most of the drop comes because you're educated, educated beyond the level of college. So that's 40%. So now you go to elite scientists, members of the National Academy, highly accomplished subset among scientists, the number drops to 7%. There was a headline in Nature the British journal Nature, which said after this study was released, 93% of elite scientists reject God. So that was supposed to be a shocking headline. And I look at that and I said, that's not even interesting. That was the trend line anyway. What's more interesting, which was not the headline, is that 7% of elite scientists <laughs> pray to a God. Isn't, isn't that a more interesting fact to you? Isn't that kind of interesting? The most accomplished scientists in the world, in that community, 7% of them still pray to a personal God. I think that is deserving of more study than the 93% who don't. Because something's going on there. We don't know what. And I have uh, confronted people on this. I would say, to the most sort of vociferous in the atheist community, I would say, you're beating the public over the head, say, telling them, why, why are you doing that? And I'm thinking, before you beat the public, why don't you beat them over the head, okay? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, if you're gonna rank, if you just, because that, I, you understand that first, because if you can't convert that 7%, you've got no hope in the general public. That's all I'm saying. This, this, this is among the ranks of the scientifically educated. Now, philosophers basically invented atheism. And if you do this, if you check the statistic for philosophers, it's down, it's below 
There are no religious, the only religious philosophers there are, they're like theologian philosophers, all right? If you subtract the theologic philosophers, this number is essentially zero, all right? So they're basically birthed atheism, uh, the philosophers. And there's this talk, uh, I, I don't know here in, in Australia, uh, uh, what, does the Bible in the public school class or not? No, is it by law or is it just by tradition? Is it by law? Okay, so in America there's this understanding that the state and the church are separate. And by and large that's been honored for, by and large, for most of the history of the country, by and large. And the, what's interesting about America, a point that was a little bit alluded to earlier today, is that it was founded on the principle that the state has no religion. The state is indifferent to what religion you might have. So that means there's no authority over you that's gonna tell you who would want to worship. And that's a state that we all take for granted, but so many places in the world that is not true. Well, there's a case in New Jersey where a middle school kid was lectured to by the history teacher in a public school, and the history teacher said, if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are going to hell. And there's a little Muslim girl there said, you are already damned to hell, first point. Second, that Noah had dinosaurs on his ark. Third point he made is that Big Bang and evolution are just theories and you can take them or leave them. So, I, I don't, like I said, I don't get into these, I just don't. We got people who do this. We've got the four horsemen. We got, we got our boy here um, who's coming up after. We got people who fight this stuff. I'm not one of those, really. I, I'm doing this because like, I know you all, this is the bone I'm throwing you, but I, really I don't do this. So, but then I thought about it and I said, you know, I have an op-ed, I, I mean a, a letter to the editor on this that I can write. And I left out the part about Jesus. I left that out. Because if that's how he feels, he, wa he wants you to be Christian, that's okay, fine. I left that out. I went to the rest of what he said. And this was my letter, as it appeared in the New York Times. People cited violation of the First Amendment when a New Jersey, that's a separation of church and state, essentially. New Jersey school teacher asserted that evolution and the Big Bang are not scientific and that Noah's Ark carried dinosaurs. The case is not about the need to separate church and state. It's about the need to separate ignorant, scientifically illiterate people from the ranks of teachers. That's the problem. If he wants to believe Jesus is a savior, that's not synonymous with being scientifically illiterate because 40% of American scientists pray to a personal God. What is identical with being scientifically literate is that if Noah was a human being, he did not have dinosaurs on his ark because humans and dinosaurs did not coexist, all right? Every one of those scientists knows that, even the 40% who pray to God. So this is, this is how I've sort of split the kingdom there. Then, then you get the, the billboard wars. Okay, this was fun, Big Bang Theory. You gotta be kidding, God. All right, so this goes on. This is what we, we put up with, all right? Um, so then we got to, then there was like, let's come back. Praise Darwin evolved beyond belief. Freedom from religion found it. So the billboard wars are, are in progress here. There's some people who are like okay with God and okay with sort of how things evolve, so they ride the, f the fence. So here's a bumper sticker. The Big Bang Theory, God spoke and bang, it happened, you know? So they're, they're excited about both, God and the Big Bang. But then we had this idiot back in May, Judgment Day, did this, did this Judgment Day stuff reach below the equator? Jeez, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was, now the good thing, this, what, un unlike other predictions, like Jesus will come one day, this had a date, okay? You could test it. <laughs> this was like easy to test. You just sort of wait around for it, all right? So 
Now, it turns out that May 21st was only the day Jesus was supposed to show up. The actual end of the world is October 21st. So the end of the world is still to come this year. This is directly from the website. So I had to tweet. So this is May 21st. So on May 21st or May 20th, I tweeted this. If Jesus actually arrives May 21st, it'll be easy to convince skeptics. If he doesn't show up, do the faithful become atheists? That was my question. Now, in a Twitter stream, it's a, it's a, it's a live conversation with complete strangers. Everybody depositing their 140 characters worth of thought. So here this is. There was a huge reaction to that tweet. Now, you would expect that most of my followers, or at least a big fraction of them, would be sort of atheistic. So you'd expect people to say, this guy's an idiot. Why are we even spending any time on them? Well, one such person did make such a reply, but not in the way you might think. No, anyone who's read the Bible know this camping asshole was full of shit from the start. <laughs> okay. So what do you do with that? So, so this is somebody complaining about the prediction of Jesus coming because he says this other guy doesn't know Jack about the Bible, but this guy does. And went on, there are other places where people quoted that one can't know when Jesus comes. So the fact that this guy's saying he knows means he doesn't read the Bible. So this, so, so this is what's out there. People who are ready to vociferously argue about who knows the Bible the least.